Welcome to Xamarin University. This is Xam 101, getting started with Xamarin. One of the first things you should do as a Xamarin University student is check out the short orientation video on the Xamarin University website. This video will show you all of the benefits and the features that you can leverage as a Xamarin University student and help you make the most of your Xamarin University experience. You can find the video at university.xamarin.com slash getting hyphen started. Let's see what it means to develop applications with Xamarin. There's a lot of innovation happening in the mobile industry. Traditionally, when we say mobile, we think phone, but we're rapidly seeing new device categories emerging, including wearables, IoT, and holographic. As app developers, we should think of mobile as mobilizing our users' data, and that may mean supporting a wide range of devices. And users are now expecting devices of all types to be connected online and generating data. Everything from checking the temperature of their home while they're on vacation to getting live updates of when their cab or the flight is going to arrive. That data should be relevant, detailed, and readily available. And we're using more than one device to consume and interact with that data. Take a look at your desk right now. You're likely sitting in front of a desktop or laptop computer, and many of us will have a phone and a tablet close by. Now, this isn't unusual for developers, but we're seeing casual users carrying two, three, and four devices with them, and they expect to be able to switch between them depending on what they're looking to accomplish. And it's not just work. We're seeing smart devices in all aspects of our lives. That includes entertainment, athletics, and healthcare. And these devices, and more importantly, the applications running on them, need to work everywhere, across devices, across network types, and across country borders. And users do prefer apps to consume their data, and they prefer apps over a mobile browser and a mobile website. Let's look at some of the trends. In 2014, users spent 85% of their time on mobile devices using native apps, and only 15% using a mobile browser and mobile websites. In 2015, that number jumped to 90%, and in 2016, it rose again to 92%. Users download and they use native mobile applications. So great, you need to reach your users and you know that they want to use a native app. So how do we go about it? Well, let's focus on the three big ecosystems, iOS, Windows, and Android. Writing apps means adding business logic and creating a UI. Using the traditional development approach, we build our iOS app using Objective-C or Swift in Xcode. We build our Windows app using C Sharp and Visual Studio using the .NET library. And we build our Android app using Java or Kotlin in Android Studio using the Android Software Development Kit and the Java SDK. Well, writing applications for each platform means we need expertise on each vendor specific language. In these cases, that would be Java or Kotlin or Objective-C or Swift. And the entire application needs to be repeated in each language. Take a look at this example code. Even with this simple for loop, there are enough differences that you can't simply copy and paste the code. It can be really tedious and error prone to write this algorithm multiple times. And when you're using more complex types and patterns and architectures in the languages, that can mean bigger differences. And this repetition of work continues when you need to, make, need to make updates or fixes, and it requires significant care and attention to keep the app features in sync. But of course, using the vendor provided tools and languages means that we can write powerful, performant, and compelling applications. We get full access to all of the platform features, and we get the benefits of using the platform specific tools to write high performance applications. And users prefer applications that use the features in the UI provided by the platform. They look and feel natural on their platform. And what's expected on one platform can feel wrong on another. What we really want is the ability to write applications that can take full advantage of the power, the features, and the performance of each platform, but write the code in a common language. Or even better, share the code across these platforms to reduce development time and help keep applications synchronized across all of our supported devices. And this is where Xamarin comes in. Xamarin is an app development platform that lets you build applications for iOS, Android, and Windows UWP and share code across all the platforms. That includes Android phones, iPhones, Windows, 
desktops, and it also includes other form factors, like macOS and wearables and IoT and Xbox and HoloLens. We can write applications that share code across all of these device types and operating systems. With Xamarin, you write your applications in C Sharp using Visual Studio on either Windows or Mac OS. And it's more than just the C Sharp language. You also gain access to the .NET libraries that provide features and standard APIs across all the supported platforms. Now with Xamarin, you have two development strategies. The first is to share your business logic and then write your user interface uniquely for each platform. And this is a really powerful technique. You're able to use the exact same code for all of your business logic and then take advantage of the unique UI features for each platform using the native controls and the native design patterns. And this can allow you to share 70% of your code or more across Windows, iOS, and Android. There is another option. Xamarin Forms allows for even more code sharing in the form of a shared UI definition. With Xamarin Forms, you define your UI once, and that UI definition is then used to create the appropriate native controls on each platform. We'll look at both approaches. Xamarin iOS and Xamarin Android allow you to write iOS and Android applications in C Sharp, leveraging all of the same features available to developers using Swift or Java. But you have the advantage of being able to share and reuse code between your iOS and your Android applications. And of course, you can share this business logic with other C Sharp platforms like Windows, UWP, WPF, or even ASP.NET. You also create your UI for each platform using the platform specific APIs, but everything else is written in C Sharp. Now you might be wondering about API coverage. Can you use all of the features available to Swift developers? Can you use all of the new iOS features or Android features? Well, the answer is yes. Xamarin has 100% API coverage, but all accessible in C Sharp. And what about Android? Well, it's the same story there. 100% API coverage, and again, all available in C Sharp. And of course, when it comes to Windows, well, Microsoft already provides all of the development tools and APIs in C Sharp. Now, Google provides Android library types written in Java. Apple provides library types written in Objective-C. Well, Xamarin provides a C Sharp version of every one of those types. Xamarin also exposes the platform APIs using common C Sharp patterns. As an example, on Android using Java, you'd commonly see getter and setter methods. But in C Sharp, we would expect a property. And that's exactly what you would get when you're writing Android applications with Xamarin. Xamarin also offers excellent performance on each platform. For iOS, your application is a fully compiled binary, offering all of the performance you'd expect of a native compiled application. On Android, Xamarin leverages just-in-time compilation, just like a Java Android app application, to create an optimized executable on the executing device. Xamarin offers native performance, and with the language advantages of C Sharp and the runtime advantages, it can even create applications that are faster than apps written in the native languages. Next, I'd like to introduce you to Xamarin Forms. Xamarin Forms gives you the power to share your UI definition cross-platform. And Xamarin Forms not only lets you share UI code, it also has a number of significant development advantages as well. It has over 40 UI elements that you can use to create your UI, all of which will create the appropriate native control on each platform. We'll see how that works in just a minute. You can define your UI in XAML, and this is much like the XAML you might have been using as Windows developers for years. Using XAML and data binding lets you achieve a strong separation of UI from code behind. Xamarin Forms also includes a number of really useful APIs to help with navigation and animation and dependency injection. The Xamarin Forms controls are really abstract models. For each Xamarin Forms control in your UI, a platform specific control is created. So, for example, in our Xamarin Forms XAML, we might use an entry control like you see here. When we run this app on iOS, the Xamarin Forms infrastructure will create a native UI text field. On Android, the user will see an Android edit text, and on Windows, they'll be presented with a text box. This means our Xamarin Forms UI is really a native UI, and it's a native UI on every platform. You write your UI once, and it runs with the native look and feel on each platform that you support. Xamarin Forms originally launched to enable cross-platform mobile UI. 
originally supporting Windows, iOS, and Android. Well, the number of supported platforms has increased thanks to the community. Samsung is now publishing a Xamarin Forms NuGet package for Tizen, and the Xamarin Forms team is adding support for a number of desktop platforms, including WPF, macOS, and Linux support. Now, even though we're sharing our UI definition, Xamarin Forms applications don't need to be boring. You can still make compelling, beautiful applications. As an example, this application is called Xamarin Sport. And it looks and feels great by using strong color schemes, well-structured layouts, and tasteful use of the Xamarin Forms animation APIs. And it's completely free and open source. Now, one more thing I want to share with you before we jump into setup. Xamarin is also completely open source. Because it's open source, you can download the source code, review the code, and see how things work and add features to extend the platform. And if you want to contribute, Xamarin takes pull requests. Now, users expect your application to be everywhere that they are. And Xamarin helps you get it there. The last section we're going to cover for today is setting up your development environment. One of the goals of this class is to set up your development environment. There are a lot of moving parts that need to be downloaded. So to save some time, I would suggest starting these now and start the install process. You're going to want to start downloading Visual Studio for either Windows or Mac OS from www.visualstudio.com. First of all, you can use either a Mac or a Windows PC as your development machine. Depending on your development environment, you'll be able to target different mobile platforms. The Mac allows you to target iOS, Android, and Mac OS. Windows allows you to target iOS, Android, and Windows. Installing Xamarin on Windows can be done from the Visual Studio 2017 installer. You can get that from visualstudio.com. We definitely recommend the latest stable release of Visual Studio. Now, if you don't have Visual Studio installed yet, then the Xamarin tools can be installed directly from the first run of the Visual Studio installer. If you already have Visual Studio installed without Xamarin, you can relaunch the installer and add it afterwards. When you're using a Mac, the first thing you should do is install Xcode. You need the latest Xcode from the App Store, which means you likely need the latest version of Mac OS. Once you've got that installed, download Visual Studio for Mac from visualstudio.com and go through the install process. This will install Visual Studio for Mac, the Xamarin development environment, as well as the Android SDK tools. There are a lot of downloaded components that have to be installed from various locations, so this could take anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour, depending on your internet speed. Once that's finished, you'll be ready to start building Android, iOS, and macOS applications with Xamarin. If you have an Enterprise Visual Studio subscription, you can sign in with your account from the initial welcome screen to enable any enterprise features. Now, the Xamarin development tools are all free, and the compiler, the runtime, and the framework libraries are all open source and available from open.xamarin.com. However, those of you with a Visual Studio Enterprise license do have some additional features available to you. Make sure to use the Enterprise installer from the Visual Studio download portal to ensure that you get the correct license. Visual Studio lists the edition on the welcome page, so if it says community, then you're using the free version and not the enterprise licensed version. Once everything is installed, you'll want to check for updates. On Visual Studio for Windows, Xamarin is released with the Visual Studio installer. Open the Visual Studio installer and check for any updates. On the Mac, you can use the Visual Studio application menu, check for updates to find any pending updates. When you do Xamarin updates on Mac OS, you'll see a dialog similar to the one you see here on the screen. This has two things of interest. First, it shows you any updates available for your system. Xamarin updates the tools fairly regularly to keep up with Apple and Google. Second, it lets you change the release channel. Xamarin has three release channels. Alpha, where you'll find the latest version of the software. This is often a bit fragile and subject to change as it evolves. The beta channel has the APIs locked down. It still might have some issues, but the shape likely won't change. And then there's the stable channel, which is the released fully tested version. You can switch between the channels at any time based on your testing needs, although we generally recommend that you stay on the stable channel unless you need some new API that isn't exposed in that channel yet. Now, Visual Studio on Windows bundles early access features into the Visual Studio Preview, a download available to everyone from visualstudio.com slash vs slash preview. The Visual Studio Preview can install side-by-side -side with the stable Visual Studio IDE, 
allowing you to test out the latest things yet to come along with your typical development. This gives you access to the latest features and fixes, but it might have reduced stability in comparison with standard releases. Now you can do your development on Windows with Visual Studio, even when you're creating iOS applications. Apple licensing requires that we build the application with a Mac with the Apple SDK. And that means we can't do everything on the Windows side, and you will need a Mac to actually do the final compilation step. Xamarin solves this through a service installed on a network connected Mac known as the Xamarin Mac Agent. Visual Studio connects to this process and it delegates a portion of the build to this Mac, allowing us to compile with the native tool chain and launch the Apple provided iOS simulators. You'll need to run the Xamarin installer on your Mac to install the build host. Our wizard will walk you through the setup to enable access from your PC. Now when you create or open an iOS project within Visual Studio on Windows, the IDE will connect to the agent. So here's the basics of how that works. When you create or open an iOS project with Visual Studio on Windows, the IDE will attempt to connect to the Xamarin Mac agent. If you have established a connection in the past, it will remember that connection and try to reconnect. If it's unable to connect, or you haven't connected to a Mac agent yet, then you'll be prompted to connect to a Mac host. Visual Studio connects and interacts with your Mac using a secure SSH login. Remote login is disabled by default on most Macs, so you'll need to do a little setup before you can connect to the Mac host. The connection wizard will walk you through the necessary steps to turn on the remote login. You'll log in to the Mac that you want to use and then access the Sharing Preferences app, as you see here. Select the checkbox next to Remote Login. And then make sure that your user ID is listed among the allowed users to remotely access this Mac. You can also manually set up your Xamarin Mac agent from the Tools iOS menu. Opening or creating an iOS app will create the secure SSH connection to the build host, and it launches all the various agents needed to support the design and the build process. Progress of the agent launch is all reported in the Xamarin output windows in Visual Studio. There is a restriction that you should be aware of though. You currently cannot locate your Visual Studio projects on a network share. The project has to be on the local drive. And this normally impacts people who use a virtualization technology where the physical host drives are exposed over a network share. The Xamarin Mac agent was written to be very helpful in diagnosing issues. It will auto-correct the most common network issues and prompt you as necessary with the appropriate fixes. If you do run into issues that it can't solve, you can use the Help Xamarin Open Logs menu item to get access to the created logs. There's a similar folder on the Mac build host under library slash logs slash Xamarin. Once you've got your development environment set up and can build your app, you're ready to run and test it. There's two options here. You can install your application on the different physical devices that you own, or you can run the software on simulated devices on your computer through the use of emulators and simulators. Simulating the environment tends to be a little faster than using a real device, particularly for the build, run, test loop that we often find ourselves in as developers. Also, simulators can replicate a variety of form factors and versions, allowing you to test the software on different types of devices that you might not physically own. Apple provides an iOS simulator with the Xcode development environment. And the Xamarin tools create native iOS apps, so we can use the same testing tools that you would use using Objective-C or Swift. The simulator can be launched with your application from either Visual Studio for Mac or Visual Studio 2017 on Windows using the build host. By default, the simulator always runs on the Mac. So if you use Windows to build your app, the simulator will actually launch on the Mac build host. That means you would need access to the display and the mouse and the keyboard of the build host machine, either physically or through some kind of remote desktop solution. The simulator supports a variety of devices and resolutions as well as different versions of iOS. Now only the latest iOS release is installed by default, but you can use Xcode to install older iOS versions. Xamarin also, however, provides a remoted iOS simulator for Windows developers. This lets you view and interact with your iOS applications right from Windows. Your application runs on your Mac, but is visualized on Windows. And there's a lot of benefits to using the remoted simulator on Windows. There's things that you just can't do on the Mac simulator. So for example, we have touch on our Windows laptops. We can use that touch to interact with our simulator just like if we had a real device. 
On the Android side, you have a few choices, but the simplest option is to use the emulators installed with Visual Studio. Google supplies a set of emulator images called Android Virtual Devices, or AVDs. It can require a few steps to get things optimized to run on your machine, but once you do, they're quite fast and they support a wide variety of devices and OS versions. To create a new Android device, you simply, in Visual Studio, go to your Tools menu, go to the Android Device Manager, and here you can see the installed emulators and create new ones. When you create a new emulator image, you can select from any Android OS version, even up to the pre-releases. You can also select the device form factor, phone versus tablet, the device resolution, and even create other Android device emulators like TVs and wearables. And this is by far the most flexible Android emulator system available today. Windows has UWP emulators that ship with Visual Studio. The UWP emulator has two types, Windows Mobile, which is a Windows 10 on a phone form factor, and the UWP desktop emulator. You might wonder why you need a desktop emulator when you're running on a desktop PC. Well, it's really a useful tool for testing your application on different screen sizes, different screen densities, and to test things like rotation and gestures. This is an optional install, so make sure that you install that component in Visual Studio. The emulators require Windows 10 with Hyper-V enabled. Hyper-V is an optional install. Visual Studio should turn it on when you install the UWP emulator, but if not, you can use the control panel to add Hyper-V support. You can also run your apps on physical devices. Each device type requires some setup. All of that's covered in the link shown here and also in the Start Here document. If you have devices handy, it's a good idea to set them up for development so that you can use them for testing. Now, once the development tools are installed and you have a project open, you'll be able to select your target execution platform. And this can either be an emulator or simulator or a connected physical device. Now that brings us to the end of our introduction to Xamarin. I do suggest if you're having trouble with your setup to contact Xamarin University for a one-on-one -on -one office hour and we can help you with your setup. Thank you for watching this video of our introduction to Xamarin. Thank you.